few videos ago, someone gave me all these riding mowers and stuff for free. Some of them are really only good for scrap. Others are probably nice enough to mow with, with a little bit of work. And ones in between would be fun to get running and crash into stuff with. So let's uh, see what we can do with these. I got the starter off that. It's pretty crusty and pretty worn out. I found uh, this starter on this mower down here. This is a single cylinder Briggs Intec, and the one in the garage is a twin cylinder, but the starters look identical to me. So let me pop this one on the other engine and see if it works. Hmm. Okay, these starters are actually not identical. This one has a 14 tooth gear and this one has a 16 tooth, but I think it'll work if I swap the gears. See if we can get some actual uh, gasoline coming out of this fuel line. I pulled it off, turned it over a bit, and I saw like some rusty water come out. Let's do it a little more. Good enough. Put that back on. For some reason this cup that holds the wheel on the inside is like bent out a little bit and there's not enough room to get the retaining ring on to hold the wheel on. But I found some scrap metal that fits over the spindle perfectly and I'm just going to give it a few whacks here and try to bend it back in a little bit. That is a running, driving lawn tractor. I swapped those other three tires out for ones that uh, didn't leak out faster than you could pump it in. So I guess I'll just keep going down this line. I'm gonna skip this one because it has one of those uh, like variable speed drive setups and I'm sure it's all seized up solid and I would never ever get that working. I think I can make this one run and drive uh, relatively easy. The uh, ground wire here was hooked to nothing. So let me hook that up and see if it'll work. There we go. Well, except locked up. Let me see if I can just kind of gently force the engine through whatever's holding it here. I think it's a rusty cylinder wall. Yeah, there we go. Let's 
take the kill wire off the uh, uh, magneto. Almost. I'm gonna give up on this one for now. This starter is seized up and the Bendix is stripped out somehow. And I don't have another starter like this anywhere that I can find. Also, it's missing the cooling shrouds and the main drive belt and this piece that goes in between the seat pan and frame to hold you up while you uh, sit in it. So I'm just gonna stick this back down there and move on to the next one for now. So it turns out you can in fact explode a tire with starting fluid. I have never done that before. Holy crap that was loud. Alright I'll have to uh, find another tire and wheel to put on this but let me see if I can get it running first. I believe the blade spindles are seized up and the belt is stuck to the engine pulley. Okay, I think it's free now. Okay, there's no oil in here, so let's put a little in it before I blow it up. Pour some gas in the tank. Let's see if it'll uh, run by itself. Okay, it took me a few tries, but I think I have a functional carburetor now.
This deck is beyond hope. This half of the deck is rusted out, and I think this half is bent. So that is scrap metal. So the steering on this mower is actually broken. For whatever reason, these two gears don't mesh the way that they should. Hopefully you can see what's going on there. So yeah, I can't see a simple way to fix that. I'm not even exactly sure how it's supposed to be. And this thing's got plenty of other problems anyway. It's got too many wheels in the back and not enough wheels up front. And the seat pan is just kind of hanging out there. So I don't intend to do anything with it, but I do want to try and get this engine running because it's a nice Kohler, or it might be a nice Kohler. The starter was st stuck, so I just took it off there and pried on the pinion teeth with a screwdriver and got it spinning again. So I think it will turn the engine over now, and uh, we can go from there. Carburetor's rebuilt. Let's see if it'll run on its own. Okay, this one runs now. It does not drive because it's missing the pulley off the transaxle because I took it off of this Craftsman to put it on the last Craftsman that I fixed. This Craftsman that I pulled the engine off of does have the right pulley on it, but I cannot get it off. Anyway, I ordered one so I can make that mower drive, hopefully. And hopefully I can swap the engine from this one, which is missing the rear end, onto that red one over there. This thing, it's definitely got spark and it's got compression, but it acts like it's not pulling any air in the intake. It's just compressing the same air over and over. And the carburetor that I took off of it was super corroded. So I'm wondering if this thing doesn't have a stuck valve, maybe. Ooh. Yeah, 
yeah, that will definitely cause an engine not to run. Looks like someone's had the push rods out of it for some reason. Fortunately, there's like a million of these down there to rob parts off of. So, got a couple of push rods. All right, let's see what happens now that the valves are actually doing something. I think I made a working carburetor, uh, got some gas in it, so let's see if it'll run. I ended up buying a uh, blown engine and I stole the starter and carburetor off of it for this one. So let's see if this will run. The ring gear on this flywheel is broken right here. That's the first time I've ever seen that happen. Got the flywheel from the parts engine on there, so now let's see what happens when we try and start it. Check this out. The engine block has a huge crack right here. And like this bolt right here is just finger tight. Yeah, the rest of these are, that one's loose, a couple more loose. The whole like cylinder jug is kinda hinging like that every time it it fires, uh, so it's just like the whole top of the motor is trying to fall off while it runs. All right, with the exception of this older Troy built here, these all run and drive. We got a couple drinks in on New Year's Eve and decided that these needed to be tested out. They all worked perfectly. And by perfectly, I do mean terribly. Oh, that's right, this one did throw the drive belt off, so it doesn't drive, but it did run good. I'm not sure what happened to this one. It was idling fine, and then as soon as we set it to full throttle, it just blew out a bunch of smoke and died. But continuing on, I decided to work on this generator and see if I could get it going. I slapped a gas tank on it and attached a battery. And I'm gonna see if I can get it to run.
I dropped a Phillips head bit and it went down in that hole and it's jamming the flywheel. Unbelievable. I got it all put back together. I did get this top cover off the carburetor like I was trying to, and it actually looked really clean in there, but it was totally dry. So I suspect the fuel pump is just not working. So I filled the float bowl with gas just from a bottle and put the cover back on, and I'm gonna see if it'll run like that. Uh, and if it will, then we know we just have a bad fuel pump. I took the cover back off the carb and cleaned the jets out. I think the main jet may have been clogged. I couldn't really tell, but it's definitely not clogged now, so. tested it with a multimeter and I'm showing zero volts out of the outlet there so uh, I'm gonna try flashing it generators need a, a small amount of uh, what they call residual magnetism to start producing electricity and if they sit for long enough that can bleed off and you can restore that by just putting some voltage across the rotor while it's spinning so I pop this little cover off here to expose the terminals on the brushes and I'm gonna try putting voltage across that and see if it fixes it. I was applying a full 12 volts directly to the rotor through this car battery. I was only getting 50 volts out of the outlet, which was just barely enough to spin that drill over, as you saw. So I took the end bell off, and with a Scotch Brite pad on a Dremel tool, I just kind of cleaned up these rings that the brushes ride on because they were pretty corroded looking. Another problem I did notice is that the wires that go to these diodes in the end bell are rusted off. So that might explain why it stopped generating power every time I took the uh, jumper cables off the rotor. But I want to make sure that I can at least get it to output, you know, 120 volts or whatever before I uh, buy any parts for it. My multimeter kind of crapped out on me there, but when I put 12 volts to it from the battery, I got about 50 volts out of the outlet and then when I put 24 volts to it from a battery charger I got about 80 volts out of the outlet so I think all the major parts in the generator are fine and that's working as intended I think the problem was just these diodes so I got some new diodes put them in there and I replaced this capacitor as well just for good measure I don't know if it was bad or not but That's not good. That capacitor blew up. I put the old capacitor back in. 
I can't find anything obviously wrong other than the capacitor exploded for some reason. So I guess I'm going to see if the old one explodes as well. I'm going to call that good. That space heater and heat gun were like 3,000 watts combined and it didn't seem to have any problem with that so it seems to be working just fine. I don't know what happened here. The only difference is that the original was 130 microfarads instead of 220 which is what this one is. But as far as I know that should have made this one more durable. I guess it just broke for no reason. I just drug this up here. It looks promising. The tires all have inner tubes in them so you can tell someone actually cared about it enough to do that. Let's see if it's got any oil. Yeah, looks good. Got a good battery in it. Let's see what happens if we try to start it. Sounds like the starter's stuck. Looks like the problem was actually the starter solenoid, not the starter. I thought it was fine because I heard it clicking, but it's not actually making a connection and allowing voltage out of it. I got the old starter motor off. It is seized up tight. Fortunately, I found a good one off of a parts engine down there. So I'm going to pop that on and see what I've got. I'm glad I took that off because I also found a huge mouse nest that uh, would have definitely caused an overheating problem on this cylinder. The coil is definitely putting out power, but it's not firing for some reason. So I'm going to pop these spark plugs out of here and see what they look like. Well, that doesn't look bad. It's definitely got good spark. I wonder what the odds are that this thing will run without cleaning the carburetor. replaced that starter solenoid with a working one so now it starts with the key and it seems like that smoking pretty much completely cleared up. That should make someone a perfectly usable riding mower, especially with this excellent Dale Earnhardt livery all over it. I felt like this video was getting a little bit repetitive, so I skipped ahead a bit and got these four running and cutting to varying degrees. There was nothing uh, especially interesting about that. It's just the exact same stuff you already saw me do. Cleaning electrical connections, cleaning carburetors, airing up tires. 
etc etc i think i'm just about done fixing stuff here so i figured i would just walk through and kind of show you what's left for fun a bunch of horizontal shaft honda clones this burner uh, that came with the pressure washer engines this mower is uh just kind of a piece of junk it's complete but everything's very rusty it does have a nice briggs opposed twin that somebody might want i'm just gonna try and sell that as is Spin up frame i'll take that to the scrap yard there was a bunch of snappers and i scrapped a bunch of them because they were in terrible condition i kept this one specifically because it had this pull start single cylinder engine on it and then when I unloaded it, I flipped it over and smashed the pool start. So I will probably end up taking that to the scrapyard. Small military generator. I do intend to try to get that working. I definitely intend to try to fix this dirt bike. The engine on it is stuck. I think it sat for a long time outside with no carburetor. So it's just been exposed to the elements. Needs everything, but it is a Yamaha. So it's probably worth fixing. I don't know why I kept this snapper. That's going to scrap. This thing is pretty cool and it is mostly complete. It has a little dump bed on it. 10 horsepower Briggs and Stratton to a torque converter like on a go-kart. And then a little, I guess, uh, forward neutral reverse transmission there. Chain drive to the rear axle, rear disc brake there. Unfortunately, it needs a ton of work, and no matter what you do to it, it will always be a three-wheeler. So I'm not super interested in it, and I think I'm just going to try to sell it as is. Derelict Murray. Uh, might try and sell that. It does have an opposed twin on it that might run. A couple of John Deere's that are missing a bunch of pieces, but uh, might try and sell those because John Deere stuff is valuable for some reason. Another small rider that is mostly complete, but just kind of a piece of junk, very rusty. Uh, don't intend to do anything with that. Just sell it complete, maybe, or take it to the scrapyard. A stripped frame. Uh, another derelict Murray. What does this have in it? Single cylinder Briggs and Stratton. Missing a bunch of parts. This electric pallet jack is pretty cool. I doubt that I will be able to fix it, but I do intend to try. Old Craftsman missing just about everything. Uh, another John Deere frame missing everything. A Troy built frame missing everything and smashed to bejesus. Another strip frame. And this Craftsman GTV18 apparently. What does this have in it? That stuck hood is what it's got. What is this? A yeah, that's a Briggs and Stratton opposed twin horizontal. I was going to try to get this running, but it is surprisingly rusty, and like even the pulleys for the drive belt right there are just about rusted through. And I'm sure everything else is just as bad. Fortunately, I think it's just too far gone for me anyway. This actually turned into a perfect example of the dangers of ignoring your intuition. I tried to sell this thing and nobody wanted it even for scrap price, which should have told me something, but I foolishly decided to try to get it working. And to make a long story short, every single moving part on it was seized solid with rust, just about. And after fighting with it for the better part of a week, I did manage to get it running and driving briefly. For some reason, the drive belt kept popping off and then at one point it snapped. So I put another belt on it that I had and that belt did the exact same thing until it popped off and got jammed and the engine pulley burnt through it before I realized what was going on and could get it shut down. I think the problem probably has to do with this variable speed drive pulley setup it has under here. I messed with it a little bit, but I couldn't see anything obviously wrong with it. so. I don't know. But I don't have any more belts that fit it and I'm not about to go buy one so that is as far as I'm going with this thing. It does run pretty okay so maybe somebody will at least buy it for the engine. It smokes pretty good but I'm 99% sure that's because I accidentally put uh, some diesel in the tank instead of gasoline. Let's see if it'll start.
But aside from that, I think I have just about sold everything that I wanted to. I sold all the working mowers that were sitting there and a fair number of non-working mowers as well and parts. I messed with this a little bit. Uh, the batteries are completely dead and they won't take a charge. So I'm assuming the cost of new batteries would probably make it economically unfeasible to uh, put this old and probably obsolete unit back into service, but I could be wrong. Uh, I've got it listed for sale for I think a hundred dollars. I'll see if anybody wants it. Everything else is basically just carcasses that need to go to the scrapyard. I sold that little military generator uh, for a hundred dollars I think which I thought was very reasonable because it had no spark and I tried to take the cover off of like the where the ignition system is and a bunch of water came out and I couldn't get the cover all the way off because the crank pulley was stuck on because someone rounded off the crank bolt so I just sold it as is and then that three-wheeler trike thing with the dump bed I sold it as well it went to a good home guy said he was gonna fix it up apparently it was like a commercially built thing it was called a coral healed something or other super trike utility trike something like that but I think I'm gonna go ahead and load most of this stuff up to take to the scrapyard because ironically I need to cut the grass <laughs> Before I scrap this motor, let's open it up and see what happened to it. I had two of these, and the other one had a cracked engine block, so that's pretty obvious. This one also has a cracked block, but it looks like something tried to come out of it. And the guy I got it from said it was still running, so I'm really curious to see what happened. Let's see if we can get this cover off. pieces parts in there from something so I guess that's one camshaft which is all chewed up and then I guess this one doesn't want to come out there we go that one looks a little better still been hitting stuff there's metal everywhere in here Oh, this must be... What the heck? It rides on like an eccentric lobe, so it must be part of an oil pump or something? Yeah, I honestly do not know what that is. Oh, maybe it's... Okay, so that thing... Okay, there's another one. I don't know if you can see it. There's another one deeper in there. And it looks like the other one is still attached to this, um, this cast iron chunk here. So that must just be like a balance weight. It kind of moves up and down on this arm and this pivot point here. Well, why would you, why would you even put that in there to begin with? Wow, so I guess that let loose and then, yeah, that would make sense. That tried to smash its way out of the block. Huh. So I guess you could just take that out and run it anyway, maybe. What a piece of junk. That can go on there, and this pile of junk can disappear. And that is the end of that, or almost. I gotta take this generator back to the guy I got all this stuff from. Uh, he requested it back, and that's perfectly fine with me. Uh, I need to take him a cut of the money as well, because there was a substantial amount of it and this dirt bike can uh, sit around until I get around to fixing it but anyway uh, as far as I'm concerned if I never see another riding mower again as long as I live it'll be too soon go-karts on the other hand 